<laughs> All right, we will begin now. At least I've got us recorded. Thank God. You know, the acoustics uh, um, Zoom session that we did is still uploading as a YouTube now as we speak. It's taken forever. <laughs> so that one's being uploaded as a YouTube, and you will be able to see that one. Anybody missing who missed that session can go into uh, the acoustics, the dashboard, look under coursework, go into unit one, and if you scroll down and look at the lower left-hand corner, you'll see Zoom sessions, and you will see the link for the acoustics and the, you know, the other the Zoom sessions. But anyway, it's still uploading. All right, back to share screen. Why don't we do this here? Okay, yeah, I'm glad I remembered to record. I just about forgot. I did that once last year, you guys, and I had to do the whole thing over again just by myself. Like... <laughs> Was for a loser. All right. So anyway, what we'll do today, and I will reiterate the same thing as I did in acoustics uh, uh, when we started. Try not to look at Zoom sessions through things called cell phones because they're not big enough to see the detail. Always better to look through a regular full-size monitor. Just sorry. If you have to go to a library to do it, you go to a library to do it. But do it. I ask because it's, it works, as they say, more better. Now, we've got a bunch of stuff up here, but I want to highlight this right here to begin with. Anatomy is form. Physiology is what it does. Always remember the, dis the distinction between those two terms. You know, people bandy the terms about anatomy, physiology. Well, anatomy is what the shape of it is. Physiology is shows how it works, how it moves, how it functions. When you're talking about the whole outer ear, today's whole session is about a coverage of the general ear, all the parts. What we're going to do today is give an overview of the entire ear system, from the outer ear to ear canal, ear drum to the three tiny bones of the middle ear, going to the inner ear, the cochlea, going through the eighth cranial nerve to the brain stem, and finally the temporal lobes of hearing, which are the side lobes which represent hearing. By the way, the back of your, your brain, occipital lobe, is for vision. The sides are for speech and language. The front is for thinking. Anyway, we'll get there when we do. Have a look at this PowerPoint here. And I'll pull up this weird, look, weird, weird looking slide that I scanned years ago from a hearing aid company known as Siemens. Now, if you look at what this, what this is showing you here, I'll start on the left. Here's a good old tuning fork making a sound. Ear canal, ear drum, middle ear, inner ear, or cochlea, C-O-C-H-L-E-A. They call it cochlea. That's the Greek word for snail shell because it looks like a snail shell. Balance organs, eighth nerve, as in Don in Roman numeral, V-I-I-I, -I -I, or eighth okay, nerve. And then you'll notice going to the brain and things cross over and you can see the sides of the brain. So you've got your outer ear, middle ear, inner ear, and then your central nervous system of hearing. If we look at the ear now just from a slightly different angle, highlighting again the outer ear, the middle ear, the inner ear or cochlea, and I want to point out right away how inaccurate this picture is. Look at how big they draw this inner ear or cochlea. Actually, it's the same size as the eardrum. If you were to look at this cochlea or inner ear, it is about as big as the pinky, the tip of my pinky. Your inner ear is about yay big. It's about as big as a sugar cube or smaller. Okay? So in Canada, we call that about a centimeter. A centimeter is about two, two and a half centimeters going an inch. You guys in England are the only people who still perseverate on feet, inches, miles, and 212, and the rest of the world, okay, I know, I'm on a soapbox, has gone Celsius and metric. It's so much easier. Anyway, so this eardrum is overblown in this picture. This, this supposedly is the balance organs, and then this would be that eighth cranial nerve going to the brain. 
And I'll show you another picture here if we can. Okay, showing you yet another view. Just again, overview of the whole entire ear. Now, grab your ear. And you, when, you're, when you're talking anatomy, this is the part you're going to be seeing the most of. When you're as hearing instrument practitioners or hearing instrument specialists, you are mostly going to be dealing and handling the outer ear. Okay? You're going to be taking ear impressions so that hearing aids can fit in the ear. But you need also to know how the other parts of the ear work. But grab this guy and wiggle it. I want you to do that for a second with me and notice that it's got cartilage in it. Okay? Just like your nose does. Grab the end of your nose and wiggle that. It's got cartilage. Just like when you're eating chicken and that one piece off of the bone has that one kind of, I don't know, silvery or kind of blubbery looking thing. Cartilage. Okay? Now, your, your, your nose, this is cartilage here, and this is bone. Put your fingers on the top of the bone here. Okay? That, that skin just covers bone. But the bottom part, cartilage. Okay, same with your ear. If you go to the ear, the outer half, see the whole ear itself, it's called the pinna, P-I-N-N-A, pinna. Sometimes it's called the oracle, A-U-R-A, oracle, A-U-R-A-C-L-E, oracle, or pinna, P-I-N-N-A. The pinna, you can grab it and move it whichever way you like, okay? It, it's all cartilage in there. That's what makes the bumps. The cartilage makes the bumps. Notice underneath here, it's all fat and cartilage. And here's your ear canal, about one inch long. And notice that the inner half of your ear canal covers bone. So the inner half covers bone, the outer half covers cartilage. So you can wiggle the outer half, just like you can wiggle the bottom of your nose, but the skin covering the bone here has very little give. If you pu push or hit that skin by looking in, or if you hit that with a Q-tip, or you, if you bump that skin there, it really hurts. There's no give at all in that inner portion of the ear canal, okay? So just like your nose, the skin covers bone and then cartilage, ear canal, same thing, bone, and then the outer half, cartilage. Now this, uh, you're looking here at the eardrum itself, which is shaped like a little speaker cone. It's actually not a flat thing. It's a speaker. It's, it's got an indent, just like a, like a speaker does. And then you'll see the three tiny bones of the middle ear. Now the middle ear, see this purple stuff here? That's the middle ear space. And that continues down to the back of your throat. This tube, the eustachian tube, goes to your tonsils. That's why when you plug your nose and you blow real hard, you can feel it in your ears. Because this, but this tube, you need to know, like government offices, closed unless forced open, okay? It likes to stay closed, and it only opens if you yawn, or if you blow hard like that. It'll open temporarily about once a minute, and the reason it does is to let new air get in here. Now, little kids get lots of ear infections, and they get ear infections because they got these little squat faces. And when they have these little squat faces, their eustachian tubes are more horizontal because their faces aren't as long. We have gravity working in our favor as adults. Kids don't. So when they get tonsil, tonsil infections, tonsillitis, the infection crawls right up this eustachian tube and goes right into their middle ear. They get a pathology called otitis, oto, ear, itis, inflammation, media, middle, middle ear infection. That's called an earache. Hurts like hell. Three little bones of the middle ear. Normally people call them the hammer, the anvil, and the therap. Well, from now on, we will call them the malleus, the incus, and the stapes. The malleus, incus, and stapes, and they terminate into the inner ear. The inner ear has these balance organs and cochlea. 
Balance is more important than hearing. Let's talk turkey here. Okay, honest to Pete. What would you rather have, your hearing or your balance? Let's look at this picture here too, okay? Now once again, showing you. Now this one's a little more accurate. See how the cochlea is still a bit too big. It should be the size of the eardrum. Ear canal, eardrum, malleus, incus, stapes, cochlea, balance organs. The balance organs come first. You need balance to live. In gestation, when mom is carrying a new baby, in that fetus, balance develops before hearing. Balance starts to begin at already three weeks gestation. Hearing doesn't begin until around eight weeks after. Okay? Hearing comes later. And if you draw the parallel with good old evolution, okay, balance all animals have. Look at the line along the side of a fish. Okay? That's how fishes know to, to swim in schools because they've got that line. That's their balance organ. All animals have balance organs, but not all animals have hearing. Hearing is like a luxury sense built on top of balance. Balance comes first, then hearing develops upon balance. And it's a system whereby we can detect sound waves. But uh, it's, it's, it's really weird. Only, an, only mammals have a completely developed um, inner ear like that. Birds don't as much. Amphibians don't. Reptiles especially not. Reptiles can't hear worth crap. That's how mammals got away from the dinosaurs. Little skittering mice, because they've got great hearing. But uh, what do you call reptiles can't hear with, as the Scottish would say, they can't hear worth crap. All righty then, mighty. Now, why don't we take a peek see at our notes here, carrying right from the top here. Outer ear, oracle, or pinna. It's about the most useless part of the ear. Good to have glasses on, good to hang earrings on, but what did we say in acoustics earlier? It also resonates. And it resonates like a wine glass at Christmas. It resonates with high pitches. And why is that important? Because in speech, the consonants, as we said in acoustics class, are high pitched. So the outer ear has its weird shape to help emphasize <clears throat> the audibility of high pitched consonants of speech. Look what it says here, ear canal. External auditory meatus, it's called. External auditory meatus. Meatus is the Latin word for tunnel. E-A-M. It's an inch long. <clears throat> now the eardrum, or tympanic membrane, separates the outer ear from the middle ear. Separates the outer ear from the middle ear. Tympanic membrane. The function of the outer ear to gather sound, and look what it says here, resonates with high frequencies of speech. Look what, I, look what we call HZ, okay, hertz, remember that from acoustics, with high hertzes, high frequencies of speech, and sends this to the middle ear. What happens if you have no outer ears? You might get a slight hearing loss, a little bit of high-pitched hearing loss, a little bit, not much. Okay, it doesn't, just a bit. <clears throat> Loss of high frequency resonance, whereby to hear the high pitches of speech, but it doesn't mean you're deaf by any means. I mean, it just means you have a little bit more difficulty. <gasps> Look at this, the most common outer ear pathology, earwax. <laughs> now, look what that's called, cerumen. Cerumen is the word for earwax. Now, earwax grows in the outer half of the ear canal, not the inner half, the outer half. When you use Q-tips, all you're doing is jamming wax further down into the ear canal. 
There's no wax glands that produce wax in the inner part of the ear canal. In men especially, hair grows in, in the outer heart part, but in everybody, that's where wax is formed. Wax is good for you. Ear wax for the ear is, is like mucus for the nose. You need it. Besides, bugs don't like earwax. And your ear canal is 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit. Oh boy, nurses take blood temperature through the, through the ear at times. Bugs love to lay eggs in an ear canal, okay? So it's a, earwax is kind of a natural retardant to that. But look at this word, cerumen. Have you ever heard of the, the, the Roman word sincerely, sincere? Sincere means without wax. In Roman times, if you loved someone, you gave them a solid silver statue, and it wasn't filled with wax. Sine sire, cerumen, okay? It was sincerely. It was not filled with wax and just the outside shell being silver. The whole, sil the whole statue was the real McCoy. Just thought I'd throw that in there. You don't, you know, it's just useless but interesting information. So anyway, if we scroll down just a trifle here, I tried this this morning and I just about lost everything. Okay, move on down. Venema, put your glasses on. You can't see squat. Okay, here we go. So most common outer ear pathology causes mild conductive Hearing loss. Now circle or underline that word conductive. There are two types of hearing loss. Conductive <clears throat> and the other type is called sensory neural. I will spell it for you. S-E-N-S-O-R-I. Sensory, okay, S-E-N-S-O-R-I dash neural. N E U R A L, sensory neural. Now you want a short form for that? Just call it S N H L, sensory neural hearing loss. S N H L. Now sensory neural loss, <coughs> excuse me, is caused by damage to the cochlea, damage to the inner ear, right here, and damage there is the most common. This is what elderly people get. 95% of people with hearing loss have sensory neural hearing loss, which means damage inside the cochlea due to aging, simple, slain, and pimple, okay? Conductive hearing loss is a completely different kettle of fish. Conduct, think of an electrical wire conducting electricity. Conduction just means to go through. So if there's something blocking sound going through the ear, that's conductive hearing loss. Ear wax in the outer ear blocks sound, conductive hearing loss. Ear infection of the middle ear blocks sound getting to the, to the ear. Again, conductive hearing loss. Can you fix ear wax? Yep, you betcha. Get a nurse to ream it out. Can you fix Middle ear infections, yep, see a doctor, get antibiotics or get tubes in the ear or whatever, they can treat it. You can't fix sensory neural loss due to damage in the cochlea. You can't. That is permanent. It will either stay the same or it will get worse. The only thing you can do is hearing aids. And that's why there's an HIS program at Ozarks Technical Community College. Because if you could fix it, why would we have a field? Okay? So sensory neural loss. Very important to distinguish between those two. And we'll go across this path a thousand times again. All I'm doing is just laying out the general broad strokes here. Now, middle ear. Middle ear, still not the heart and soul of hearing. Still not, okay? We'll go up just a trifle to see that better. The middle ear, it's, caught, it's formed by the tympanic membrane or eardrum, three layers, one from each embryonic layer. What does that mean in English? Or as we say in French here in Canada, en anglais, s'il vous plaît, okay? In English, if you please. Now, the three, when you are just after your parents made you 
and you are just forming after the first couple of days in your mother's uterus, just as you are forming, you, have a, you are a disc, and you've got three original layers of skin tissue. Ectoderm, mesoderm, endoderm. Yeah, my fingers, okay. Ectoderm, mesoderm, endoderm. Ectoderm, you don't need to me memorize this, okay? I'm just talking. Ectoderm forms your skin and nervous system. Mesoderm forms your bones and muscles. That's the, and endoderm forms anything slimy, the inside of your cheeks, your bowels, your intestines, anything that's slimy. So, the out the eardrum is really unique because it's the only layer, it's the only piece of, of, of tissue in your body that preserves all three of those original embryonic layers. Ectoderm, mesoderm, endoderm. The outer part, the, it has three layers. The outer part of your eardrum is ectoderm. The middle part is mesoderm. It's the tough tough part, the part that makes it tight. And then the inner layer is slimy, and it's continuous with the space of your middle ear. So if you look at the middle ear, this whole middle ear would be slimy. It's all sticky. <laughs> it's just the way it is. All right. So read what it says here. Middle ear space is a closed space. Think government offices, closed unless forced open. It's filled with air. There's no fluid in there. Not supposed to be. You've got the three little bones. Then in our field, they're called ossicles. We won't ever call them bones again. The middle ear ossicles, and they are the hammer, the anvil, and the stirrup, or else we call them the malleus, incus, and stapes. Of these three, the stapes is the smallest. The stapes is the smallest bone in your body. The femur, your thigh bone, is the largest bone in your body, okay? The femur, the largest, the stapes is the smallest. The eustachian tube connects your middle ear space to the back of your throat, as we said earlier. And the function of your middle ear, what is it, what is it? physiology, what does it do, okay? We talked about the physiology of the outer ear. It resonates with high pitches of sound. Okay, that's its physiology. The physiology of the middle ear is it changes, and here's a word you got to get used to in our field, transduces. Transduces means changing from one form of energy to another. That's all trans, transduction means. It changes sound waves in the air, those condensation, rarefaction, condensation, rarefactions that we talked about in acoustics class, it changes those into mechanical piston-like energy so that the little bones, these three little bones here, and let's see if I can bring that in closer to look at it, so that this stapes is going boom, 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 pushing in and out of the cochlea constantly. And if I go back, you can see it here too, pushing in and out here, okay? And it's, it's situated in what's called the oval window. See where, I'm, my, where my cursor is right here? That's, the, the, that's where the, the foot plate of that stirrup or foot plate of that stapes bone sits in that what's called an oval window. All right. So looking at it here too. The foot plate of that stapes, I'll bring this, make this a little larger, sits right inside of this oval window there, okay? So it, 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 and it pushes in and out of the inner ear, in and out of the, of the cochlea. Essentially, so now we'll go and look at our good old notes again. And what else does it do? Look at this. It increases sound pressure so that it can activate the inner ear. Now, check this out. The inner ear is filled with fluid, not air. This is filled with air. This is filled with fluid. Now, I'm going to stop sharing, and I want you to do this with me. If you think, if you have your head under a swimming pool, let's say I'm standing at the hotel swimming pool, I'm standing outside the pool, and you're swimming under the water. 
If I talk to you, are you going to hear me? No. Ramirez is right. You're not going to hear anything I'm talking about. The, my sound waves coming out of my mouth are going to bounce right off the water. The only way you'd hear me is if I went under the water and clicked a couple of rocks or something. Then you'd hear. But if I'm outside, okay, talking to you, this, my sound waves are just going to bounce off the water. Well, if that fluid in the inner ear, that's the inner ear is filled with fluid, airborne sound is going to just bounce right off of it. It's not going to go in. It can't, can't activate it. The middle ear, I'll share a screen again. Look at what this guy has. Look at how big, yeah, my internet in connection is unstable. Yeah, so is my sanity. Okay, here we go. Look at how big this eardrum is compared to the stapes bone. Okay, keep that size in mind. Big eardrum, little stapes bone. Okay, now I'll stop sharing again. Take your hand and push it against your cheek real hard. One, two, three, you two there, Minnesota. Okay, one, two, three, push really hard. Now stop. Now put your finger against your cheek and now push with the same pressure. Hurts, doesn't it? That's why you have a middle ear. Sound hitting a great big area, that force is converged onto a point. When you've done that, you've increased the pressure. Pressure is force over an area. That's why thin bike tires have way more air pressure than fat car tires, okay? Pressure is force over an area. That's why, how come, you have a middle ear. To take sound over a big area and converge the force onto a point. Let's put it this way. If you're laying on your back watching TV, and I'm your roommate, and I walk up behind you, and I put a cinder block brick on your tummy, you're going to go, oh, get that off of me. But if I have a nail on the end of that cinder block and put it on your tummy, you're going to take a dirt nap. In other words, you're going to die. Okay? So, again, pressure is force over an area. That's why a knife cuts through bread. You've got force on your wrist, on your hand, and you're converging that onto a thin, thin slice. So <laughs> it goes right through. That's a fundamental principle of physics. Pressure is force over an area. Oh, you're going to get that in spades and acoustics. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So anyway, there you go. That's why you got yourselves a middle ear. Now, let's go to your good old notes. Yeah, see where, see what else I can lie to you about. Oh, yeah. So what happens if you have no middle ears? Well, you'll get a conductive hearing loss, just like if you've got wax in your ear. You're going to have somehow the passage of sound will be blocked. The amount actually depends on the transducer. In English, depends on the headphone used. We'll talk much more about that in later classes, not to worry. Conductive hearing loss is the most common hearing loss in children, okay? Adults don't get ear, middle ear infection, otitis media. They don't get that very often. Kids do, and that's because adult faces get longer. Now, here we go. Check this out. Inner ear. Cochlea and vestibular system. Vestibular system means balance. Okay, as soon as you see that word vestibular, balance. Hearing and balance. Now, this is the center of the universe. If I were Jewish, I'd say it's the holy of holies in the tabernacle. If I was a, a holy roller, I'd say this is the inside of the church. This be where it's at. This is the in, so this is it. If you haven't got an inner ear, you're deaf. The outer ear just helps to resonate high pitches. Middle ear increases the pressure of sound so it can activate the fluid-filled inner ear. The inner ear is where all the action takes place. Think of vision. Light goes through the eye and goes to the back of the eye. The back of the eye is called the retina. If you've lost the retina, you're blind. 
the retina changes light into electricity, and electricity is the language your brain understands. Well, the inner ear changes sound into electricity, and electricity is the language your brain understands, okay? Cochlea, hearing, vestibular system, balance. Each has what they call osseous and membranous labyrinths. Oh, yeah, yeah, here comes the quick. <laughs> Gotta like it. You know what's going to happen in this course? We're probably spending most of the time in the, in, uh, of this course, like several, a couple of weeks at least, on the inner ear. Because the inner ear is really, really, really quite complicated. It's really, you, when you ask medical doctors, what did they like studying this? They'll say, oh, I liked studying the heart. How about the ear? Nah, I didn't like that. It gets kind of complicated. But anyway, let's summarize where we've been. Here's the outer ear, ear canal, cartilage, bone. Well, that's what you saw earlier. Here's the middle ear. Look at the size of the eardrum or tympanic membrane. Malleus, incus, stapes. The size of this eardrum compared to the size of that stapes. This would be the cochlea. Now, this picture's correct. If you'll see the size of the cochlea, it's the same size as the drum. Note also about the drum. See the speaker cone? Okay, that's how it's shaped like a speaker. Kind of neat. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa, it just got, it got uh, drowned out on me. Okay, this is an another picture of it. Eardrum, malleus, incus, stapes, and then cochlea and balance organs that are not highlighted. Now, if we took the top off your head <laughs> and took out your brain, this would be the location of your inner ears. Here's your balance organs, like cauliflower sticking out, and here's your cochlea. Okay, balance organs, cochlea. The outer ear canals are not on here. The middle ear just is, isn't on there at all. It just isn't. This is just, and this big hole here, that's where your spinal cord enters your skull and turns into your brain stem, okay? Called the magnum foramen. You can see up here, this is anterior, the front, your eyes would be here. And you can see that the snail shells, the tips of the snail shells kind of face the back of your eyes, okay? That's the general orientation. Here's another picture of it. Looking at the outer ear, ear canal, middle ear, with its bones. Here's the eustachian tube going down to the throat, and here's the location of your cochlea and balance organs, vestibular system and cochlea, and here's the eighth cranial nerve going to the brain. Temporal bone. Now this is what we're, we're going to find out where this stuff all is. Your skull isn't all one unit. It has several parts to it that, are, that have kind of grown together. The temporal bone is the side, so if you took that puppy out, you can see where I'm removing it now. Okay, and so this, this here would be the jaw. And here's the ligaments of the jaw. Now, some people complain about pain in the ear. And actually, they should be seeing a dentist. It's called TMJ, temporal mandibular joint. They get arthritis in this joint, and it really aches. And the part that it aches underneath is, is, is right underneath your ear canal. It really hurts. It's a, it's a, you, we'll, we'll, we'll learn more about that later. But fitting the eye is very different from fitting the ear. We're just all just talking here. Here's an eyeball. Here's your retina. Okay. Light not properly reaching the retina. So you go to the dollar store. You have eyeglasses and you put them on and they refocus that light so it hits the back of the eye properly. Got it? Okay, that's why vision loss is no big deal. I mean, people get vision loss at any decade of life. It's fashionable to wear eyeglasses, it's cool. Okay, and when you go in optical shops, everyone's happy, and there's waterfalls, and there's gorgeous babes acting like, you know, models wearing glasses, and everything's kind of on the up and up. Huh? Hearing loss, it's like I went to the back of your eye and went, <laughs> scratched your retinas. Now go ahead and wear your glasses. Okay, that's what hearing loss is. 
Because look, here's the outer ear canal, eardrum, middle ear, the problem is not there, it's here in the cochlea. The cochlea is the, whoops, the cochlea is the retina of the ear. If you ruin that, the damage is permanent. It's sensory neural hearing loss. That's why hearing aids have the name they do. Hearing aid. They aid. It's, they, they can't restore normal hearing. They help. Like a cane for a bad knee, they help but they can't replace the real McCoy. And that's why you have in this field courses called counseling. That is literally why in, in an HIS program, you will have a course called counseling because you have to explain to people the limitations of hearing aids so that they come up with realistic expectations of their hearing aids. It's very different from getting a set of glasses. Because optometrists and opticians, yeah, they'll be doing this kind of, how does that look? Ah, it's still blurry. That's better. That's good. Okay. That's a prescription for that eye. Healed. Jesus. Okay, what do you want? What type of frames do you want? Done. And they're not sitting here. Well, this is how you use your glasses, and this is how you, da, 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 da. oh, you might have questions about them being bifocal or whatever. They'll answer you certain questions, but the counseling required with hearing aids is dictated because of the damage, the unique type of damage to the end organ of hearing, and how is it different from that of the eye? Sometimes to get an idea of who you are, it's good to know who you're not. We are not opticians. They are fitting conductive vision loss. Do you see what I'm saying? They're fitting this. When you can't, the light isn't properly reaching the retina of the eye. And because it's not properly reaching the retina, they'll fit you with glasses so the light does properly reach the retina. So vision loss usually is conductive. Hearing loss isn't. Only 5% of hearing loss is conductive, and that's usually children with middle ear infections. Aging is the most common cause of hearing loss because people get better with wine, like wine, they get better with age. The second most common cause of sensory neural permanent hearing loss is noise-induced hearing loss. The sad thing about noise-induced hearing loss is that it is preventable. Elderly people in Africa have better hearing than elderly people in USA. And the reason why is because Africa has less noise pollution, less industry. So they just age naturally and get hearing loss due to age. North Americans, uh -uh, our ears were meant to hear soft voices over the crackling of a fire. We weren't meant to hear the clanging of steel on steel. That's the industrial revolution. So that ruins your hearing. So if you can hear someone's headphones and you're not listening to their headphones, they are earning permanent noise-induced hearing loss. We don't stare at the sun unless you have a total eclipse like you did in Missouri, okay? Otherwise, uh-uh, he can't. But people seem to think that the ear is impervious to the ravages of noise. They're just blasting it out. Well, no kidding. Now guess what they're going to have? Trouble hearing kids and women speaking because they're losing treble hearing. Noise causes per is the second most common cause of permanent sensory neural hearing loss. Okay. Let's... Uh, that was, a, that was a unique set of lies. I mean, actually, none of it's true. I, I'm just kidding. Okay, I'm just going to see how many slides we had here. Oh, yeah, look at this. This These are what's called hair cells inside your cochlea. These are hair cells. So in your cochlea or inner ear, you have fluid inside the inner ear in that snail shell shape. And amongst the fluid are a bunch of hair cells that we will be studying later on in this course. These are damaged hair cells. These are normal hair cells. These are damaged hair cells. So damaged, normal versus damaged, either due to age or noise, makes perfect hearing, gives this analogy. Perfect hearing looks like this. 
impaired hearing looks like this. So I can use a hearing aid on this. It's not going to fill in all the, all the black and white pieces. It won't. It's going to help, but I can't replace hair cells. When they're gone, normal, damaged. When they're damaged, the damage is permanent. And you can't, they can't replace. You can't get in and fix that. Remember, the whole cochlea is as big as the tip of your little finger. And it doesn't matter what language you're in. This may say perfect hearing looks like this, impaired looks like this. Same thing in Chinese. It doesn't matter. And it actually does say that. Someone told me. Huh. At any rate, we'll see if we've got, uh, okay, let's see. Good, good. Let's go to our notes now. All right. So you, we will study later on in this course one tunnel inside your cochlea, another tunnel inside your cochlea. This membranous labyrinth contains the hair cells. We've got 15,000 of them in each cochlea. The function of the inner ear changes mechanical energy into electrical energy and sends it on to the brain. Remember, electricity is the language the brain understands. What happens if you've got no inner ears? You are deaf as a post. The inner ear is everything. With inner ear hair cell damage, one has sensory neural hearing loss. Sensory neural. Note the two words, sensory and neural. Okay, what's, what, what, what difference do they make? Looky, looky. I'll show you. Here comes cookie. Sensory and neural. Sensory loss is due to these hair cells shaped like these or horseshoes. These are called outer hair cells. Neural hearing loss is caused by these. These are inner hair cells. Now damage to these outers happens first. See that? The inners are still okay. Damage to the outer hair cells happens first. Later on, damage to the inner hair cells happens. We will be describing a lot of this in anatomy class, I'm just giving you just a great big overview. It's all we're doing, okay? Sensory loss, outer hair cell damage due to aging, noise exposure causes mild to moderate sensory neural loss, which by the way, BTW, is what Mr. Jones and Mrs. McGillicuddy are coming to see you about. They mostly have mild to moderate sensory neural loss. Not huge, they can still hear you, their complaint is kids mumble these days. I wish people would speak up. The TV's turned up a bit too loud, but the, they can still hear pretty good one-on-one. -on -one. Not bad. In noise, they've got problems, but one-on-one, -on -one, not too bad of a problem. If you've got neural loss, that's inner hair cell damage, that usually occurs later, causes further sensory neural loss and very poor speech recognition. The most common type of sensory neural loss, here I gotta close the door because I'll keep the noise from bugging other people in this house here. Hang on a sec. All righty. Yeah, okay. So most common type is presbycusis. Look at that word. Anybody into religion here? What does that word look like? How about Presbyterian? Presbyterian, yeah. Presbyterian. I'm a preacher's kid. Presbyterian, it's true. <laughs> and a Presbyterian means church of the elders as opposed to the deacons. It's church of the elders. Presbycusis, hearing loss in the elders. Presby is the Greek word for elder. Presbyopia, when you hit 40, you can't see close up anymore. Your arms aren't long enough to see the page. You're holding things farther away to see. Okay, presbyopia, hearing loss or vision loss in the elders. Presbyopia hits you when you're 40. Presbycusis hits you when you're 65. Okay, Just, and it's usually trouble with treble hearing. What's the Latin word for elder? Senex. Senator. <laughs> we won't go there. Or senile. Okay, so elder. Senex. In Greek, it's presby. I just thought I'd throw that at you just to bug you. Okay. 
So, and then the second most common cause of hearing loss, as we said, is noise-induced hearing loss. The sad thing is that it is totally preventable. I mean, it doesn't have... Now, we'll just quickly finish here with this. We've got about 10 minutes left. We'll just kind of yak. I just the, Now you're getting into the eighth cranial nerve. Now, in your skull, okay, you have a spinal cord going down your back, but your spinal cord, if you work your way up your back, and enter your skull. As soon as your spinal cord goes into your skull, it's called the brain stem. Now the brain stem is about as thick as my finger that I'm holding right here. And off of, I'm going to stop sharing here, the brain stem, from the brain stem you have 12 pairs of cranial nerves. 12 going out here, 12 going out there. And the eighth pair is your hearing. Okay, the first pair is vision, and you have another pair for your tongue, and another pair for this and that, all these other reasons. But the eighth pair is your eighth cranial nerve. All right, so you're looking at the eighth cranial nerve here. It's the shortest of all your cranial nerves. It's only an inch long. You have one going from your right ear, one going from your left. They, from right ear to the left ear, they meet your brain. What if you have no eighth nerves? Again, you're deaf, <laughs> gone, no message can get to your brain. Here's a word you need to memorize, retrocochlear pathology. Retro means back. Eighth nerve pathology is called retrocochlear pathology. Eighth nerve retrocochlear pathology is usually a, a tumor on the eighth nerve. It's not cancerous, it's benign, but you will die. It will kill you. Because the eighth nerve goes through a little tunnel of bone, and that tunnel of bone doesn't give. And if that tumor grows and can't grow anymore in that tunnel, it's going to enter your brain and grow there because your brain is soft. It's most common. It is a benign but potentially lethal tumor. It's very rare, only one in 100,000 people. So in the city of Springfield, which has, I'd say, probably about 150,000 people, 200,000, maybe two people have an eighth nerve tumor. It's kind of rare. Audiologists are skilled at finding these. We don't cover this. We're not doing it. But audiologists with their AUDs, their doctoral degrees in audiology, they do brain waves to look for eighth nerve tumors if they are suspected. This kind of a test is called auditory brain stem response. We don't do it as HISs. Audiologists do. And it's not really not in our scope of practice. But you know what's a sign of retrocochlear pathology? Retrocochlear pathology is hearing loss in one ear. All of a sudden, guys got hearing loss in one ear. Why the hell would you have hearing loss in one ear? Okay, you have an ear infection. Okay, that, that, that could be. Or maybe you're a trucker. And you got more noise-induced loss in this year because your window's open on the left side. Yep, that's where a case history is very important. Or if you're a hunter, if I'm right-handed, the gun, for the sound from the rifle is mostly going to hit my left ear. If I'm left-handed, I'm most of the sound's going to hit my right ear. So if you've if you've ruled all that out and you see some young adult to someone 40 years old with hearing loss in one ear. And the loss isn't even all that big, but it's why would you be getting that? And you find out it's sensory neural. That's what's called a red flag. You have to send and refer to a physician immediately. Can't fit with hearing aid. Illegal. Okay. You need to refer because you, you, are, you are suspecting it's consistent with an eighth nerve tumor. They have to rule that out. So they'll, they'll do a test on, on that person and find that. Okay. And the last of all, but not least, you've got all these weird parts of the CANS. That's the central auditory nervous system. That's the brain. That's, that's, you know, pathology there. Don't worry about this stuff now. Don't even think about it. But central auditory nervous system doesn't affect hearing so much. It affects listening. <laughs> you can see, but you're not looking. You can hear, but you're not listening. Children, learning disabilities. 
usually little boys bouncing off the walls, filled with testosterone and androgen, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, ADD, central auditory processing dysfunction. Teacher can't control the kid. The kid ain't listening. He's wild and completely nuts. Okay, central auditory pathology. Uh, they have to learn listening skills. They often get put on Ritalin, which is kind of sad. It's overly diagnosed and labels unfortunately stick. You can't get labels off after you stick them on. I think far too many people are diagnosed with that that don't actually have it. It could probably be that the teacher was simply boring. And that's usually the product of the cause. The teacher doesn't have it and doesn't know how to teach. At any rate, you're going to notice some uh, weird terms here. Itis, infection. Algia, pain. Okay, every time otitis, ear infection. Otalgia, ear pain. Okay, oto is ear, O-T-O. -O. Okay, otoplasty, plastic surgery on the ear. If you have an... Oma doesn't mean grandmother or whatever. Oma means tumor, eighth nerve neuroma. And usually when you see the, the suffix oma, it means tumor. Or plasm means a tumor or new growth. If you have a ectomy in, a, in, a, in, in medicine means removal. Osseous means bone. So again, conductive hearing loss caused by problems to the outer and middle ears. Otitis media is the main cause, mostly children, can be medically treated. If hearing aids are needed, clients are generally happy with them because you're just power. And wonder work and power and everything is pretty good because the hair cells of the inner ear are fine. But sensory neural loss caused by problems of the inner ear, cochlea, and or eighth nerve, like damage to the retina of the ear, in quotes cannot be medically treated. Only hearing aids can help. Hearing aids and sensory neural loss, well, as you may have heard, mix like oil and water. You will be doing a lot of explaining to your clients, but I'll tell you this, the most important thing is to tell them the limitations of their hearing aids. So they walk out with realistic expectations. I always tell people, you can, I, I, I can't make your hearing like you had when you were 10. But I can reverse the clock 10 years. You know what I'm saying? I can help. I can't grow new hair cells. They're, they're gone. That, that's, that, I can't do that. But I can certainly help. But you have to, the good hearing instrument specialist right away clarifies this. The bad hearing instrument specialist makes a sale, but guess what? The hearing aid gods come to bite him or her in the ass every time. Because that client will be back, and will be back, and back, and you ain't making any money then, are you? So it's very important to explain right out that the person has a good handle and grip on what's going on. Fitting eyes versus ears, lenses for the eye are very are, are, are like fitting conductive hearing loss. Easy peasy Japanese. Okay? Fitting eyes versus ears. When you know who you're not, you have a better idea of who we are. Hearing aids simply make sounds louder. They can't separate speech from background noise. And that's a huge complaint. So, and it's all because of hair cell damage. That's why anatomy is such an important basic course. There's two basic pillars upon which all of your other courses rest. One's acoustics, the other one's anatomy. Okay, these courses are courses that are intertwined and they often relate to each other. And you're gonna find that again and again as the semester goes. I love the fact that I get to be part of teaching these things. Healthy hair cells separate speech from noise. Hearing aids aren't hair cells. Like canes for bad knees, they help but cannot replace the real thing. The goal for sensory neural loss is to restore normal loudness growth. Let me finish with that last slide just for fun. Here, right here. Take a look at this guy. This is a, this is a, this is 
I want you to see this very closely and then we're done for the day because it's now 4.30 in, in central time and it's, anyway, have a look, not that slide yet, dummy. Jeez, Ted, what's wrong with you? Here, have a look. These are decibels. Okay, just very soft, zero, 90, rah, loud, okay? This is a person's perception of loudness. So here's normal, this diagonal 45 degree angle line. To a normal hearing person, 10 or 20 sounds soft. To a normal hearing person, 50 or 60 sounds comfortable. To a normal hearing person, 90 or 100 sounds too loud. Get it? Now look at sensory neural loss. Hair cell damage of the inner ear. Even if it's moderate, 50 decibels now will sound very soft. And the person can't hear 40, 30, 20, or 10. No, no, they can't. Now it's got to be 50 or 60, and it'll sound very soft. But here's the kicker. 90 will still sound too loud. Do you get it? This is what's so weird about hearing aids. They have to amplify soft sounds by a lot and loud sounds by little or nothing at all. That's why hearing aids cost so much. Hearing loss is like my two hands. Here's the floor, here's the ceiling. The floor is really soft, the ceiling is really loud. Okay, so I can hear all the way to zero decibels and 100 hertz starts to hurt my ears. Here it in sensory neural loss is this. My hand went up now. Now I can't hear what's below my hand, but my ceiling didn't change. 100 is still loud, but I can't hear until 50. Okay? And that, if it gets worse, it's like that. Notice my right hand isn't changing at all. Hearing loss does this. So if you walk up to someone who's using sign language and who's deaf, and you yell in his ear, he's going to wind up and punch you in the head. Because guess what? It hurts. He can't stand loud sounds any more than you can. He just can't hear soft sounds. You're deaf when your floor has met your ceiling. When you can't hear anything until finally when you do, it hurts. That's deafness. So hearing aids, if you speak really softly, they amplify the crap out of the signal. And if I start to talk louder, they automatically back off. Think of an amplifier that automatically changes its amplification depending on how loud you're talking. If you talk really softly, the amplification goes up. And if I start to raise my voice, the amplification automatically backs off. There's a word for that. And in one word, that word is called compression. That's all it is. In hearing aids, it's called compression. And next year, you're actually going to get a course. You're going to actually have a course called compression. Because that's what all hearing aids use. And they use that because sensory neural loss, the floor goes up, but the ceiling of loudness tolerance doesn't change. So hearing aids amplify soft sounds by a lot and loud sounds by little or nothing at all. That's why people pay lots of ching for hearing aids compared to glasses. All right, that's anatomy for today. I'd be done. How about you all? Good? We're good. We're good. All I'm right. Good. Yeah, I'm good. <laughs> Stay tuned. Make sure you do your readings that are listed at the top of your notes for the day, for on your notes that you've got. And again, I'll always reiterate, always print up the notes just before you come on to the, the, uh, the, the Zoom sessions. That way you can follow through. Next week, we're going to go into the outer ear in detail. We'll talk about looking into the outer ear with what they call otoscopes. We'll talk more about the wax and the cerumen and looking into the ear and landmarks on the eardrum and all that crap stuff, okay? So... Other than that, live long and prosper. We'll see you when we look at you. How's that for being profound? <laughs> All right, I'll stop recording over here.